Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello viewers. Welcoming you again to the course Deep Learning with Keras. In our last video tutorial, we have learned about the basic layer structure of Keras. In this session, we are going to focus on the important parameters of Keras. Let's start the session. We are starting with initializer. The initializer parameters tell Keras how to initialize the values for our layers. For the dense layer, we need to initialize our weight matrix and our bias vector. Keras is offering a bunch of built-in initializers. By default, Keras uses the zero initializer for the bias and the Glowrot Uniform Initializer for the kernel weight matrix. So these are our available initializer options. Let's go to the Jupyter Notebook and uh, work with the initializer. To work with the initializers, first we have to import the required models, layers and modules. These are the names of available built-in initializers. We have assigned those to a new variable initializers. Now, using a for loop, we will generate models for different initializers and inspect their weights. This get underscore weights function will help us to know the weights of the nodes. Let's run it. Our first initializer is zeros. Our input dimension is 2 and the output dimension is 5. So it will generate the weights like this. And the weights are all zeros. As we did not change our initializer for bias, it will always be 0. In case of 1s and constant 5, all the weights will be 1 and 5. In case of small models, we generally use random normal or truncated normal initializers. Random normal generates value using normal distribution of input data and truncated normal generates value using truncated normal distribution of input data. In case of diff model, we may use any one from hey. We have two options, hey normal and hey uniform. They generates value using hey normal or hey uniform distribution of input data. That's all from initializers. Now going to the regularizers. Regularizers allow to apply penalties on layer parameters or layer activity during optimization. These penalties are incorporated in the loss function that the model optimizes. By default, these aren't used, but they can be useful in helping with generalization of the model. We have three alternatives. L1 uses some of the absolute weights. L2 uses some of the squared weights and L1, L2 uses some of the absolute and squared weights. Let's run some demos using Jupyter Notebook. First we are going to import required models, layers and modules from Keras. In the first example, we will assign L1 with the value 0.1 to the kernel. We can get detail from this get underscore config function. It is displaying that we have assigned L1 regularization with the value of 0.1. Similarly, we can assign L2 just mentioning it to regularizers. In case of L1, L2, we have to specify both. This get underscore config function will show the structure of a dense layer. It is showing that we have activated both L1 
an L2 with the value approximate 0.01. Now the activation function. In machine learning, activation function is a special function used to find whether a specific neuron is activated or not. Basically, the activation function does a nonlinear transformation of the input data and thus enable the neurons to learn better. By default, it is set to none, but Keras offers us a bunch of built-in activation functions like linear, ELU, CELU, RELU, etc. Let's go to the Jupyter to work with commonly used activation function. Similar to previous example, first we will import model and layer from Keras. Activations can either be used through an activation layer or through the activation argument supported by layers. In this first example, we are going to assign linear function to the dense layer. This uh, get underscore config function is displaying us that our activation function is linear. In the second and third example, we will assign ELU and RELU functions where ELU applies exponential linear unit and RELU applies rectified linear unit. Let's check this one. So in this specific model, we are using RELU as activation function. In fact, we have many other options. We have to choose our activation function based on our requirements. Now the constraint. Finally, the last important parameter, constraint. This can constrain the values that our weight matrix or our bias vector can take on. By default, these aren't activated, but we have some options available. Let's go to Jupyter to work with them. First, we are importing the models, layers and modules from Keras. We have in fact four options. The first one is max norm. This constraints the weights incident to each hidden unit to have a norm less than or equal to a desired value. This max value contains the maximum norm for the incoming weights. This x is equals to zero means it constrains each weight vector of the length of input dimension. Let's run it. This configuration is clearly mentioning that we are using max norm with maximum value 2 and x is 0. Now unit norm. This unit norm constrains the weights incident to each hidden unit to have unit norm. Similar to previous example, we are using x is equals to 0 which means it constrains each weight vector of the length of input dimension. In min max norm, we can set minimum and max norm for the incoming weights. This rate equals to 1 stands for strict enforcement of the constraint. So I'm running this one. So this configuration is displaying that we have activated the constraint mean max norm with the minimum value 0, maximum 1 and rate equals to 1 and x is 0. Finally, non-neg. This non-neg constrains the weights to be exactly non-negative. So if we run this one in the kernel constraint, it's showing that we have activated non-neg. So we are safe from non-negative value. So that's all from Jupyter returning to the presentation. Today in this video tutorial, we have discussed about important arguments. We will continue the model API in our next session. That's all for today. Thank you very much.